This is a display that draws on our collection. In our collection we have a wonderful sculpture by Barbara Hepworth called Mother and Child that was made in 1934. And the display explores works that Barbara Hepworth was doing in advance of this sculpture and afterwards as well, that connected to this idea of maternity and then slowly moved to being about just two forms in relation to each other. Hepworth is at the centre of modern British sculpture. She was an extraordinary artist. Her use of shape, material and form was really unparalleled. But I think what makes her really significant as well is the way that she was so interested in other things that were going on around her. She was really involved in different artistic movements happening in Europe and the UK. She was interested in maths and science and art and music and all those things come into her work and that makes for an extraordinary sculptural practice. Hepworth repeatedly returns to two forms over many, many years and to this idea of mother and child. She wasn't the only artist interested in this theme. Other artists such as Henry Moore and Epstein were also making sculptures that depicted a mother and a child. And it's generally thought that this is something to do with the vitality of the subject. These artists were interested in returning to carving directly in stone and wood and letting the heart of that material shine through. So instead of making a sculpture by making a plaster cast and then casting it and really removing the hand of the artist, you have this direct relationship between the living artist and the living material. So the vitality from the subject of a mother and her child was considered to be really important. What subject could be better at expressing the idea of life? This really beautiful sculpture, Mother and Child, made in 1934 from pink Ancaster stone, is one of the treasures of Wakefield's collection. As you can see, it's extraordinarily beautiful. But more than that, it's really significant in Hepworth's work. It's one of the first occasions where instead of carving the mother and the child from the same block of stone and keeping them together, she carves the child away. In fact, if I wanted to, I could unscrew the child and remove it from the mother. This separation of mother and child was noted by critics at the time, particularly ones that were interested in psychoanalysis. There was an idea that because Hepworth herself was a mother, that she had experienced the anxiety that mothers go through when they separate from their child. And this can be understood in this kind of sculpture. The early mother and child sculptures were done around the time of the birth of her first son, Paul Skeeping. And these are really figurative and you can see quite clearly the figure of a mother and a child or just a baby sometimes. Later on, when she has the triplets, it signals this change in her work from the figurative to the abstract. And Hepworth wrote about that herself. She talked about this really significant and dramatic change where everything became very formal. And she said the only thing that had changed in her life was the birth of the triplets, but she wasn't quite sure how the two connected up. If you're interested in Hepworth, and it, this is a great display to come to, we've been able to borrow from private lenders and from other organisations such as the Peer Centre, brilliant sculptures that we haven't shown here before. In addition to this, I've also had the chance to do some really exciting research and have looked at Hepworth's own archive of photographs that she took of all her sculptures. Because this period that we're looking at here was between the two world wars, Many of the sculptures made at this time were destroyed in London or have been lost. But luckily, through photography, we're able to include them in this exhibition so that you can see some of the missing gaps. You can see that path from figuration to abstraction really clearly.